Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through the derivation of the streamlined geometric integrals uh, for the vortex panel method, nx and ny. Uh, we've gone through this for the source panel method and those were called mx and my. Uh, and so the derivation is very similar to that. So for plotting streamlines, we need to have the x and the y components of the velocity vector at every single grid point outside of the airfoil. So every one of these points here you can think of as the p uh, point that we've always just generalized our velocity potential equation to. So here's the general velocity potential equation, uh, which is for the velocity potential induced at a point, an arbitrary point p outside of the airfoil. So phi sub p is equal to, this is the free stream term, and this is uh, the term due to the vortex panels that approximate the airfoil. Note that the uh, gamma j value here is the vortex strength per unit length, and it's outside of the integral because we're assuming that the vortex strength is constant on each panel, but can vary from panel to panel. So similar to how we did in the kij derivation and the lij derivation to find the x or the y velocity, we're just going to take the appropriate derivative. So for the normal velocity, we took the normal derivative. For the tangential velocity, we took the tangential derivative. For the x and the y, we're going to take the x or the y derivative. So we have the velocity uh, in the x direction at point p is d phi p dx p. And then the velocity in the y direction at point p is d phi p dy p. You can see that here from the uniform term, uh, uniform flow term. This is all that's left, right? With respect to x, we just get v infinity cosine alpha. And then for the, with respect to the y, we get v infinity sine alpha. And then here we have the two s summation integral terms. And all we've done is just uh, taken the derivative of this term here. So we have d theta pj dx p. And for the y, d theta pj dy p. And so the focus of this video is to compute this uh, geometric integral, as we've done for every single other derivation video in this series. We have nx pj is equal to this integral, and ny pj equal to this integral. So that's the focus of this video. Okay, I've just rewritten those terms from down there in red up here. So we're solving for nx pj and ny pj, same term here. And we can plug in for theta, which I described or derived in my kij derivation video. It's just the angle between the uh, between, in this case, point P and the jth panel in that video for theta ij, it was for the angle between the ith panel and the jth panel. So here, I plugged it in, and it's the inverse tangent. Now, instead of the i terms, we have p, right? Because we're solving for the an, an arbitrary p point in the flow field. So we have inverse tangent of yp minus yj over xp minus xj. And so this is the uh, partial derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to y. Okay, now before we evaluate the integral up here, we have to evaluate the partial derivative inside of the integral, and so that's what we're doing down here. And this is the same as how we did it for the kij and lij videos that I just published. Uh, the x is up here, and then the y term is down here. We're doing these at the same time. This comes from, these expressions come from the chain rule and the quotient rule, evaluated for this expression and this expression. And so if you want the details, again, go back to the other derivations because I'm not going to go through that here. Now, the way that this simplifies down is that these here, these partial derivative terms are actually easier to evaluate. And so uh, what we can do is we can cancel some of these out. So we can see that the uh, this and this, these are both going to be zero. So that's going to be zero. That's going to be zero. This is zero because uh, even though they're evaluated at the same subscript, uh, x and y are orthogonal to each other, so that they're not going to a change in one is not going to make a change in the other one. These are not the same subscript, so a change in uh, xp is not going to change yj. Over here, same thing. We have zero and dxp dxp. That's just equal to one. So these ones are all zero. And then the same thing happens down here, where dyj dyp, that's going to be equal to zero. dxp dyp, that's zero. dxj dyp, that's zero. dyp dyp, that goes to one. And then the last thing that we can do before the next whiteboard is this expression in here, same as how we did it for the other videos. This you can rewrite as this expression down here. And so what we can do now is simplify these expressions, and that's what I'm showing up here. So if we're talking about the uh, vx term first, we can see that since both of these are zero, this whole term here is going to be equal to zero. And that means that our numerator here will have negative yp minus yj. This is just one, so that's what we have up here, negative yp minus yj. The denominator happens because this term here in the num numerator cancels with this term in the denominator, and so we just have this in the denominator. Same thing happens for the y derivative. 
Both of these are zero, so that whole term here cancels to zero, and this just becomes xp minus xj times one. So in the numerator, xp minus xj, same denominator. And now we're going to use the usual geometry variables that we use to change from the lowercase xj yj to the uh, capital xj yj with sj and phi j variables. So if you've watched any of my other derivation videos, you'll note that the denominator looks exactly the same, and it is, so we don't need to worry about that. Let's focus on the numerator, so we're gonna bring this down, negative yp minus yj down here. And we're gonna plug in for yj, this expression here, so we have negative yp, that's this, negative negative will give us a positive for this whole term, so we have plus yj plus sine, or plus sj sine phi j, and then we can say, uh, let's just put the sj sine phi j out front, and then we have minus, and then we'll put this term into the parenthes uh, parentheses, so we'll need to make this a minus, so we have minus yp minus yj, okay? Then for the uh, ny term, we have xp minus xj. We're gonna plug in for xj here, so we have xp minus xj minus sj cosine phi j, and we'll just rearrange this to give minus sj cosine phi j, that's this term here, and then plus, xp minus xj here. And these are both in the form of, for this one, cx sj plus dx, and for this one, cy sj plus dy. And so we can write the variables cx dx and cy dy as shown down here. So now that we have the numerators of the integrals in the familiar form, we can see that the integral is the same as it's been for every single other derivation that we've done. And so we can write the nx integral with the cx sj plus dx over the familiar denominator, and the ny as cy sj plus dy over the familiar denominator. The final form for both of these, we've already solved this integral in my iij derivation video, and so the final form uh, is the same for both of these except for the nx integral, we have cx dx cx here, and for the ny, we have cy dy cy here, where a, b, cx dx, cy dy, and e are defined down here. Okay, this was the last video that we needed for geometric integrals, and now we can put together the system of equations that we need to solve for the vortex panel method and then get into the code and the solutions. Thanks for watching.